Welcome to the 2011 CrossFit Games Open. The wait is over. This is week one's workout. Here we are. It is a 10 minute AMRAP, as many rounds and reps as possible of 30 double unders, 15 power snatches. Now we're calling it a power snatch, but really it's ground overhead however you want. For those of you who have not been doing CrossFit for very long or who are unsure exactly how a workout like this goes, we're gonna have a demonstration for you, but you're gonna start with the double unders. You're gonna do 30 double unders as quickly as you can. As soon as you finish that, drop the jump rope, pick up the barbell 15 times. Back and forth, back and forth for 10 minutes. You get one point for every rep completed, and then your score, your total reps completed in that time period is gonna be compared to everybody else in the world who's competing in the open. And as of this point, we got about uh, almost 13,000 participants. So you're in good company. Let's look at the weights of the power snatch. Men, which includes the two younger divisions of the masters. So this is all the open division in men and all the men in the 45 to 49 and 50 to 54 age group masters. 75 pounds, or 35 kg. We're picking weights that have a pretty close approximation to each other in pounds and kg, knowing that there's two systems around the world and we do have a worldwide competition at our hands. Women, 55 pounds or 25 kg. And again, this includes the 49, 45 to 49 year old women in the masters and the 50 to 54 year old women in the masters. Then we go to the master's category, what we're calling the master's category, but is only for the purposes of scaling these workouts, the elder two divisions, 55 to 59 and 60 plus. So for men, we're looking at 65 pounds or 30 kg, and for the women, we're looking at 45 pounds or 20 kg. If you have lighter bars and full size plates, you can use them and you can do the workout movement exactly the same way where you touch the ground with a full size plate and come up to overhead. Now, we also recognize that these specialty plates and specialty bars aren't as universally available. So, if you want, you can use a 45 pound barbell, which is much easier to find. And if you're a master's woman, you can use just the empty bar. Or if you're an open woman, you can have the five pound plates. And if you don't have the large five pound plates, we are gonna allow the lower standard, the lower edge of that movement to be just below the kneecap. All right, so it's coming down below the kneecaps and standing all the way up, stand all the way up, good. We are counting only successful double unders. It's not attempts. This is not 30 double under attempts. This is 30 successful double passes of the rope in a jump. For a good double under like Tyson here, you're gonna get really fast and sometimes you think, I'm gonna have trouble counting that. I can't keep track of his wrist and the rope. You don't have to, that's the good news. Your ear will tell you and watching his feet. So you can just count the bounces as he's going and it's actually pretty easy to judge. So I'm just watching his feet. And you can see he's very efficient here. And relax. And again, just counting the bounces, watching his feet, just counting them. Okay, so you can hear a very distinct difference when that rope is passing one time versus uh, two times. You can do any rope you want. It can be a weighted rope, it can be a speed rope, doesn't matter. We're not putting any restrictions on that for this workout. Two, three, okay, so two, because on the third one, he tripped up. Okay, so you wanna be making sure that you're counting only the legit reps. Okay, the power snatch. Now again, we're calling it a power snatch, but it is not a technical power snatch. There's no requirements about arm length, catching it in a full lockout, anything like that. All it is is ground overhead. Now go ahead and snatch it up, okay? Now, he's got the bar way back here, that's fine. Okay, we do, we don't want is, is up in front. Can you? Yeah, we want, and, and even a little further in front if you can. Yeah. So here it's hard to hold. There's a reason why it's not part of the thing. Go ahead and bring it back. 
And, uh, but we're looking for that barbell to pass over the heels, over the base of support here. All right, when you're moving really fast on the power snatch, the key thing on this, both for athletes and judges, is to make sure that there is complete lockout overhead. It's really easy to short this unintentionally, okay? Now, what Tyson was just doing was right on the edge of locking out. He did it, but it was really close. Now we're gonna look at some really common faults. No exaggerated. Yeah, good, just pull it down real fast, yeah. Okay, all right, so as you can see in this frozen frame right here, his arms are locked out, but his hips and knees are not. And that is not a complete rep. Yeah, good. yeah, all right. Yeah, good, okay. So what we saw there was this, this muscle arm that isn't that full extension, okay? That's one fault. Good, and again, it's, okay, oh, oh, all right, so actually that's good. And so we'll watch this slow motion, and you can see here in slow motion that in the beginning, he was actually coming to full extension, but then at the end, he was finishing with a little bit of, his, his knees were locked, but his hip wasn't fully extended. Um. <laughs> right. So most of the flaws are gonna be variations of that, where you're not getting the hips fully open, you're not getting the knees fully open, or you're not locking the arms out overhead. All of that has to be here, and you're not finishing with the barbell out in front. You wanna do a couple with, with finishing out in front, and not coming up, so you're not really coming all the way up. This is gonna cost you, this is a real risk in doing this movement, especially if you're really strong. The tendency is to wanna to cycle these really, really fast, and there's a video on you or there's a judge on you. In some ways, the judge is a kinder opportunity because if you don't make it, you just, you just told, no rep. Whereas in the video, if your buddy's not calling it legit, we're gonna see it on the video, and boy, I'll tell you, you can really go frame by frame in these videos and see whether or not that hip is open, right? Yeah, good, so go, I didn't hear it, I didn't hear it, I didn't hear it, all the way down, all the way, good, one. All right. You can also do a clean and jerk, so let's say that Tyson looks big, looks strong, but turns out these are beach muscles, bicep curls, and uh, <laughs> starts fatiguing, and all of a sudden 75 pounds starts to feel really heavy. You can clean and jerk it. Okay, so again, what we're seeing here, same bottom, keep going, just keep going, same top. Touches the ground, and he's just gotta get to overhead. Now, notice his grip here is narrower than it is on the snatch. Doesn't matter. We're not requiring any particular grip. He can do whatever grip he wants on the barbell. The key thing is that the arms have to be locked out at the top, and the bar has to touch the ground or at least pass by the kneecaps on the way down. Two, one, go. For this workout, for a video submission, you're gonna to have to pay pretty close attention to where the camera placement is and where the barbell and jump rope are and how you move between them. Remember, you need to have a person in the frame. This person is your friend and this person should be helping you perform the workout successfully. Okay, so there's gonna be some tendency for you to move around, for the barbell to move around, and for the jump rope and uh, dynamic between the two to change throughout the workout. My strong recommendation would be to have a third person behind the camera so that you can make sure that every rep happens in the frame. These are fairly large movements, right? The barbell is going from the ground all the way to overhead, and the jump rope, we need to see the entire body. Okay, so if you're bouncing around in that jump rope, you gotta make sure you don't go outside the frame. Now, if someone is watching the camera for you and the camera should be on a tripod, and they can adjust the tripod or move the camera to fit you in, that's fine. We definitely don't want a lot of movement because then it's really hard to see what's going on. But a little bit of movement if you start to drift out. The other thing is let that person who's in the frame help you, guide you, hey, slide forward, slide back, if the barbell bounces, when you go to your double unders, you can absolutely, that, that friend can absolutely move the barbell back to the right position in the frame. 
okay? Not helping with the workout, just making sure the barbell is where it needs to be so we can effectively judge the workout. So, what we're gonna do is, what you can see is, you are literally just in front of, from this camera angle, you're just in front of the barbell. It's not at a perfect 90 degrees, it's not even at 45. It's like 60 degrees off to the side. And so give you a chance to see lockout on the arms and also to see if the barbell comes overhead. Also, it puts you in a great position to be able to see the double unders, which we're gonna ask you to do right behind. So this little setup right here is enough space to pull out the workout and you should be able to keep that in the frame. 